1 Peter 5 is a crowdfunded traditional Catholic online journal. We are dependent on your donations to keep this content free for all. Please make a tax-deductible donation to our spring fundraiser at 1peter5.com slash donate. Uh, Annie Bali Bonini is the most infamous example, and you were the one actually who were was another witness to him being a Freemason because you had you were privy to the uh, I think Marini was in the conversation. Can you tell us about that part, your your evidence of Bunini's Freemasonry? Mon, Monsignor Mario Marini who was eight years older, no, th- 13 years older than I, 13 years older, 13 years my senior. The closer we got and the, 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 the deeper our friendship, and it really was a spiritual friendship. I'd never had a friendship like that in my life. Never have since. Uh, absolutely beautiful. He one night said to me, he said, you trust me? I said, yes, I trust you. Of course I trust you. He said, I certainly trust you. I said, very good. He said, I'm going to tell you something. He said, sometimes you see me when I come home from work from the Secretary of State, exhausted, drawn, tired. He said, I can't tell you how much it means to me to come home, have dinner with you, and go out and have a cappuccino. It's it just, it gets my mind going again and and, uh, and freezing. And we also laughed. We also laughed, which is uh, great. Great medicinal uh, 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 properties in laughter. He said, I'm going to tell you something that uh, I was debating whether to say or not to say, but I think he, he said, I think I can, we're at that point in our friendship where I can tell you. He said, I'm working with a number of people who are Freemasons. Now, listen, <laughs> Timothy, when I heard that, I remember saying to myself, oh my God, <laughs> this is conspiracy nonsense. Freemasons, what are you talking about, Freemasons? He said, he said, this is no laughing matter. I'm telling you quite seriously, and I don't think you're taking it seriously. You're taking it too lightly. And I said, it's, it's a conspiracy nonsense. Nobody believes in that. He said, I'm telling you, I work with them. I work with them and I have to combat them every move every move they're in everything uh a little aside just a little aside that that night of the that night of the uh of the general confession he and i took a walk on the lungo tevere never forget it on the other side of the river from the vatican we're walking on the lungo tevere and right before the the ponte uh uh, Vittorio Manuele. There's a little, the back end of a church, and it's sort of an alleyway, a very dark alleyway. You can see it still. There were a group of, of five, maybe six transvestites in the shadows. We were walking on, or by the street, and they started making cat calls at the Monsignor because he had a Roman collar on. People think it's uh, think it's uh, it's it's a privilege to wear a Roman collar. It's it's sometimes very very difficult to wear a Roman collar. But anyway, this was one of those times. They started making cat calls. These men dressed as women. And I said to uh, to Marini, I turned again naively. I said, I can't believe this that such a thing would be right in the shadow of St. Peter's Basilica. He, then he started laughing. He said, that scandalizes you? He said, those people in the shadow of St. Peter's Basilica, as you put it, have a greater possibility of getting to heaven than a great number of the men I work with in, <laughs> in the, under the dome of St. Peter's Basilica. Right. That's how it began. Right? I'll never forget that. He over, it took about a year, maybe even even two years, to where I was convinced that there were Masons, Freemasons in the Vatican. I didn't, I just didn't believe it. I thought it was a, it was a reaction. 
until I met Cardinal Gagnon, who told me the same thing. As a, and these are two brilliant men, and they're not reactionaries. They, they, were, they were normal, good humored, but they knew what they were up against. Two of the men that they mentioned, both of them mentioned, one was Bunini, the other one was Baggio, a cardinal. Bunini was in charge of the liturgy. Baggio was in charge of creating all of the world's bishops. Very delicate position, both of those positions. I, I don't know if you, if, I think you're, you're understanding, Timothy, you understand the, the, the gravity of both of those positions, the liturgy and the creation of bishops. Well, Baggio took care of the creation of bishops for 12 years. He created the bishops of the world and he was a Freemason. Bonini took care of the liturgy, the Catholic liturgy all over the world and he was a Freemason. Now, it's not just good enough that you say he's a Freemason. Here's what happened. In 1975, and again, it's detailed in the book, and, and all I can tell, all I can tell my readers and, and any future readers that there are is I wrote both of these books, The Godmother and Murder in the 33rd Degree, to the best of my ability and to the best of my memory. I wanted to do it to get these things out. I didn't write these books to make money. You're not going to make oodles of money on this. It does, that's not the way to do it. I wanted to get this out before I myself die. I wanted it stated because it should be stated. We're in a very bad place today in the church. And we're in a very bad place today in the church because of the 1960s and the 1970s. This is a consequence of this. This didn't just happen now, right? It began then, seriously began then. You can say modernism from the 1850s, modernism, fine. But it really hit strongly after the council, not even in the council, after the council, in the liturgy and in the creation of, of modernist bishops, which is done. Two cardinals, I'm not going to give their names here. They're in the book. You want to you find, find out who they were? I named them in the book. Two cardinals went to Paul VI with evidence, strong evidence, from the also the federal police, the Interpol. It was it was all documented. They both approached the Pope together with this evidence about Bunini. This is in 1975. It was so strong, the evidence that they had, that Paul VI, who had defended Bunini tremendously, defended him. You, uh, just a step back, you'll, you'll, you'll remember that John the 23rd, Pope John the 23rd, expelled Bunini from the Vatican. Right. John the John the twenty third expelled him from the Lateran University where he was teaching, teaching literature. He told them he was not to enter the doors of the Lateran University. All done with Bonini. Paul the sixth came in, reinstated him. Right. Whatever the reason, I don't know the reason, but he was reinstated. Uh, he decided in, 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 in Vatican protocol, probably not, not so much today, but in those days, it was certainly done this way. If you got rid of somebody, you got rid of him by, by promoting him. Diplomatic circles understand this perfectly well. Politicians understand this perfectly, perfectly well. You're promoted to be eliminated, right? Well, he was promoted as nuncio to Iran, where I think at that time, at that time there were 20,000 Catholics in the entire country, and they were very quiet people because you're living in a Muslim country. That's where he was sent off to. The evidence was there. At that same time, at that same time, there were other, other uh, 
this really knocked Paul the sixth for a loop. It really did. It, it, it really, it, it bothered him that this was, that this was, a, I don't know that he knew or suspected, but now there was proof that this man had, was, was a Freemason. And then there were, there were talk, there was talk about his Freemasonic ideology was in the mass that he had put together and was putting together. I'm not going to get into all of that. You, uh, you've understood that. A lot of people understand that. You want to read more? Go right ahead. But yes. anyway, he was he was ousted for that for that reason. Right at that time, the Pope said the Pope had a, had had a uh, sort of a vice a vice Secretary of State, the second in, in command after Bilo, who was a Frenchman, was the Cardinal Secretary of State. But there was a a, a, a virtual powerhouse in the Vatican, who was the subsecretary or the, or the, the sub prefect of, of, the, of the, the Vatican's secretary of state. His name was Giovanni Benelli. A lot of people disliked him very much because he was one tough guy. He was no nonsense. He was no nonsense. Uh, I, I know many instances where he was the one who threw, who insisted on discipline on this matter, on that matter. And he, and, he, and he did so. He, he, Benelli, and Velo, Secretary of State, did not get along at all. At all. Anyway, Benelli was the one who went to the Pope and told him that there should be an investigation on several people in the Roman Curia with ties to Freemasonry, uh, to Marxism, but especially to Freemasonry. The Pope said, yes, who shall we send to do the investigation? And Benelli said, I have just the man. He's the most honest, he's, he's the most honest, sincere, capable, speaks many, many languages, uh, easy to speak with. And he also happens to be very Catholic. Not, uh, not, not something you find so often among yes, the clergy. 